The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a free service of the cable telecommunications industry and your local cable company. It's the most basic element on the planet. It gives life to everything. And it's seemingly plentiful. But more than a billion people can't get clean water for drinking, cooking, and bathing. 2.6 billion people don't have access to adequate sanitation. And 2 million children die every year from diseases caused by contaminated water. It's a silent crisis that's holding back human progress. Hi, how are you? But I want to help end the silence. So I approached the United Nations to learn more. And on my first world tour, I saw firsthand what it's like to be without this precious resource. In Luanda, Angola, I met Bella, who showed me how her family survives on only two small buckets of water a day. And how she passed open sewers just to get to school. They smell. In a small village in South Africa, I climbed up and down steep cliffs with young people who must do this just to get fresh water back to their homes. Realize how real it is and the physical effort that it takes for me to just walk up this hill. But I also witnessed how a flush toilet can change the lives of dozens of school children. And how a simple water pump can transform a village and give its young people a chance to thrive. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Because of overpopulation, pollution, and global warming, 3.4 billion people now live in countries that are water scarce. But together, we must make water a human right, because we all need water for life. August 9th. 2006. Today is the day I announced that I'm working with the UN to bring awareness to the world's water crisis. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. Welcome to the UN. You got a lot of fans over there. Right? <laughs> One or two. Yeah. <laughs> I was honored to be there, and I was honored to share the stage with someone as prestigious as Kofi Annan. Hi. How are you? All right. Good of you to do this. I'm very pleased to announce today a groundbreaking collaboration between the United Nations, Jay-Z, to raise awareness about the world's water crisis. I chose water because it's the most basic of needs. So I'm very excited to go out, not only be a rock star in these countries, but also to help. You can notice the aggregate numbers of people who don't have access to clean water and then not do anything about it, then you just don't have a heart. Very excited, very reflective of where we are right now. <laughs> October 9th, 2006. We gotta move this car, they're gonna shake it over. Luanda is a place where access to clean water is a real problem for tens of thousands of people. I had a day off from my tour and it was a chance to see things firsthand. This place we're going to is called Rangel. I'm not an expert on this thing. I got my homeboy, Abranava Ghosh, walking me through the whole thing. It's a mixed neighborhood. You've got some solid houses and then there are a lot of shanties. It's my first experience with seeing people that don't have access to clean water. First thing they'll say, yeah, give us water. That's the first thing that you need, you know, when you're starting your day. Forget everything else. That's right. I mean, you can live without food for a while. You can't live without water. Right. I wanted to go through the towns, and I wanted to touch people, and I wanted to learn and ask about the culture. Hey, how you doing? I met a young lady named Bella. She took me to her home. Bella it lives with five other family members in a one-and-a-half-room shack. 
there's no running water in it. This is just a microcosm of what's happening throughout the world. Show me around. This is the bedroom. Mm -hmm. That's the sound, And the bed, they sleep three people on the floor, three people. Three people on, on the bed, and three on the floor? Yeah. Six people that live in this place, it has to be no bigger than the size of a jail cell. There's no shower, there's no sinks, there's no toilets. Where do you use the bathroom? One bush. They asked the neighbor to use the toilet. You have to think about what you're going to you have to think about the shame in having to go knock on your neighbor's door just to simply use the bathroom. And sometimes when it's too bad and there's nobody home, they bath just here in the yard. I want to show you something, Jay. Come. This is the courtyard of ours. They'll fill a just, bucket like this right there. and just, just stay here right out in the open. I mean, it's not just a lack of water sanitation. Right. It's a loss of dignity. Right. It's, a, it's a basic human right. Right. Yeah. That's incredible. She actually explained her typical day. Usually she wakes up really early, 6 o'clock, she has to wake up. Then she has to go fetch water until 10 o'clock. And then at 11, she has to get from 6 to 10 o'clock, she's, yeah, she's getting, getting water. So around 11, she's not getting ready to go to school. How much water each trip? You have the bucket? So this is where she gets water. Yeah, we have to get Yeah. She goes once, comes back, fills a drum, and again. In an ideal world, we need at least 20 liters of water per person every day, just for drinking and basic hygiene. A jerry can like that holds a total of 20 liters. Right. She has about five or six family members staying in this, in this shanty. And she can make about two trips a day. So you can imagine how little they have. So many people are going through the same thing that is normal. These living conditions shouldn't be normal for anyone. Can you take me to get the water? I asked Bella to take me down to where she gets water from just to see the things that she goes to on a daily basis. I couldn't believe what people had to go through just to get water. October 9, 2006. You have to go as early as possible so right. that you're not jostling for the water. Millions of girls around the world do the same every day. This is the water in hole. I really thought she was going to take me to some type of well. What she took me to was this really small house. These people are fortunate enough to have the pipe coming into the house. And, and then they, people like her will come. come and they'll have to pay right. a premium. It makes your heart sad. You see the water that's so precious to her leaking down her neck and down her shoulder. Very difficult thing to watch. Tell her to take it down. Take it down. Put it down. I'm going to help you out with this one. I try to carry the bucket. I moved about maybe 10 feet and I had to switch hands. What do you think? Very heavy. And the nearest source is more than half a mile away. You don't get the best grip as that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are chlorine tablets. She has these pills that she has to drop into the water so the water is clean. 2006, I can't believe that it's still happening. It's water. And I told him about like luxury, to my most basic of needs, you know. That's just the start of her day. Is this a school uniform? Yeah. yeah. Round 12, she makes a trek over to school. Okay, the street we're gonna come on, this is the street that she walks every day, open sewer. Smell. What the camera is not going to capture is the smell. You can't even take a deep breath. Where is this coming from? There's a municipal pipe 
that's broken here. And then people are throwing their garbage here. There is no sanitation facility. And in this stagnant water, you're going to have breeding mosquitoes. You're going to have other kinds of worms. They're selling vegetables and things right out here, right like that. You know flies have to fly from that water, land on the fruit, land on the vegetables, go back in that water, land in that again. It's grotesque. It's horrific. There'll be dogs and chickens drinking, feeding off the same thing. The kids are playing right here. Their ball is falling in the uh, feces, and they're picking it up, wiping it off, and they're right back to playing again. Imagine the type of germs that's being passed around. These are deadly germs. We can't see them, but they kill children. You know, the time it takes for us to walk to our school, three kids would have already died of diarrhea. Around the world, nearly two million children die every year because of diarrhea. That's coming from unclean water or from poor sanitation. This is the entrance to the school. So they have to actually cross the sewer. Where's your classroom? Hello? Oh, dear. The schools are very small, and you see it's almost two people to each desk. Schools in this school roof. So again, when the rains come down, it's not possible to hold classes. Right there, right there, yeah. Everywhere there's these camera phones. Yeah. Somehow people found a way to get cell phones in these neighborhoods. It's funny, the priorities that's being made. Uh, I wish I know the bus one. Okay. Very bad. That's the code. Yeah. There's no running water on the ground. So what they had to do was collect water from the far end of the school where we entered. They would have to collect it in a bucket and bring it and they had to go to the bathroom. Throughout the world, 443 million school days are lost because children don't have access to water in schools and therefore are either dropping out or are suffering from diseases. Today is a special day. The kids have a new bathroom. The school was lucky enough to get a grant from UNICEF which enabled them to install this bathroom with running water. Having a functioning toilet in that school is going to make a world of difference. Attendance rise in school. There's less germs being passed. Females are able to, when they reach puberty, take care of themselves the proper way. It's just shocking how something so small can go a long way. It's a simple intervention, not very expensive, but something that has the potential to improve the lives for hundreds of kids just in one single school. Imagine if we do that throughout the world. See you later. It was wonderful meeting you. I admire your courage. What did you think? I mean, have you ever seen anything like this, the open source? Not even close, you know? In, 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 in my business, we, we tend to always say that, you know, we're from the hood. Yeah. We're from the hood. I'm from the bottom. But this is a hard knock life. Oh, yeah. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is really the bottom. We're not from the hood. By no means. Not even close. <laughs> it's such a draining and heavy experience. You go through all type of emotion. You just want to take everybody, put them in your car, bring them home with you. You know you can't do that. October 13th, 2006. a very isolated rural community, and supplying water to them is always difficult. In this place, the houses are pretty far spread, so it's more difficult and more costly to lay pipes all around in these towns. That's the place we're going to meet in Lobo. They are. That's the school up there. 
We visited school to see how the kids can have access to clean water. Welcome to our school. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You're also. And. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? 12 years old. 12 years old? Yeah. How did you get, to get, get water before? Can you show me? They grabbed their buckets and took us on this trek. You guys will have to leave from the school with that bucket. And then you go... How far you think it is? Too far. Too far? <laughs> How long does it take you to get water? <laughs> she has the right answers. Too far and it's too long. <laughs> There's no running water in the school, but it means a lot more for these school kids. Because their houses are so far apart, it means getting water for each one of them is a more arduous task. This is not an uh, easy thing. We're walking down the hill. I can imagine walking up. The terrain is difficult. You have to go down these steep mountains to go get the water. Wow. It was these huge drops off the side of the road. You miss one step, you hurt yourself pretty significantly. They're looking back at us like sissies. Oh, wow. The whole community has to get water from here. You see where they're drinking from. They got to share that with the livestock, with cattle, with goat, with everything. There's a very narrow walkway. Realize how real it is and the physical effort that it takes for me to just walk up this hill without a bucket. That was real. Unbelievable that someone so young could be doing that every single day. We are very helpful, very thankful for the donation of made to our school, and I will show you, and maybe you'll see how helpful this is. This is a special day for Jay-Z. He's about to see the first water source that he has provided money for. After school, a play pump, which is this device, is similar to a merry-go-round. Kids run around and they spin on this, and that in turn pumps the water into this tower that they can draw from. This is an interesting solution, and it just means that children can play while they collect water. You can do that all day. <laughs> <laughs> now they have access to clean water. Instead of trekking down a hill, the kids can actually just run out of school, and there's a faucet there that's providing the clean water. They're playing, singing having a great time. And the rest of the community can get water from here. Everyone else can get water. It's very simple. The bonga feel like a huge sense of accomplishment, so I think we're going to have a, a hell of a show tonight. There are a lot of great solutions for getting clean water to places that need it. If everyone across America contributed 10 or 15 dollars to help out, we could bring fresh water to a lot of deserving people. And now, thanks to you, They've got this play pump for which the kids play, and, and they get water. Together we can do this, you can do this. We came out here to build the play pumps. We bring awareness to the water for life fight. And our whole mission is to make sure everybody has access to clean water, and that no matter how long that takes us, that's what we're doing.